Is self-doubt holding you back from getting what you want? Today, I'm talking to my good friend, Lindsay Johnson. Lindsay is a marketing and sales nerd who's been teaching newbie entrepreneurs how to get customers and make money quickly and easily for the last 18 years. Lindsay is also the creator of the Easier Entrepreneurship System and Irresistible Entrepreneurs Academy, which helps to take you from the idea stage to your first 100K year. So I had a great conversation with Lindsay. We talked all about self-doubt. We talked about how it manifests in our lives, how it holds us back, and most importantly, four practical steps that you can take to ditch self-doubt so that you can have the confidence to continue to take action and achieve all those big dreams. If you're new around here, my name's Rachel Harrison Sund, and I help people to create a passive income stream selling journals, planners, notebooks, and more on the Kindle Direct publishing platform. If that sounds interesting to you, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell so that you can be notified every time I put out one of these videos, which is each and every Monday. All right, let's jump right into our conversation with Lindsay Johnson. Hello, Lindsay. Thank you so much for joining me on my channel today. I feel like this was a long time coming. We've been talking about this for a while. Um, so yeah, thanks so much for joining me to talk about self-doubt, uh, something I'm sure we can all relate to. I certainly can. So I before we dive into things, uh, just give us a little bit of who you are and what you do. Hi, everybody. My name is Lindsay Johnson, aka The Radical Connector. Uh, I work with new entrepreneurs, people from, you know, idea stage to maybe five years in business who are working their butts off and not making money and don't know why. I swoop in with the strategies and the systems and get them going so they can start making money. That's me. Amazing. 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 Okay. So let's just dive into the topic of self-doubt. Like I said, I'm sure everyone watching this can relate and have experienced this at some point in their life. You work with business owners all the time. So can you tell me how you've seen self-doubt manifest in some of the, uh, you know, people that you work with? I would say that the number one way that I see it manifesting is entrepreneurs not showing up like online, not showing up in content, not showing up on YouTube, like not volunteering to speak. There's a, there's a, they hold themselves back a lot from putting their own brilliance and their own work out into the world because they think it's not good enough. They think other people are already doing it. There's no space for them to be in the same area. Um, there's a lot of perfectionism attached to self-doubt. If I'm not perfect, I can't show people that I'm not perfect. Uh, so definitely, definitely number one is just not putting themselves out there and showing up in a bigger way. Yeah. I think I can totally relate to every single thing that you just said. Um, mm -hmm. I really have to force myself to get out there. I feel like I'm conquering it a little bit because I am here showing up, but everything you just said, like super, yeah. super resonates with me. And now here's a question. Do you think that everybody experiences self-doubt? Are there some weirdos out there that are just brimming with confidence because I used to think that I used to see people at the top of their game and some people yeah. just seem like they are oozing with confidence all the time. And, you know, I just kind of thought, well, I'm not that person. I can never be that person. Yeah. So I guess I'm just wondering, like, is that all an illusion? Like, are people like that? Are they capable of self-doubt or are they just somehow, um, you know, this just doesn't apply to them? I, I, I almost wanted to complete your sentence and say, are they just tricking us? <laughs> you know? <laughs> I mean, I definitely think, you know, yeah, there are people who don't experience these things. There are, are people who have conditions that don't allow them to experience empathy or self-doubt or have delusions of grandeur, grandeur, you know what I mean? These are things, but I think that, that outside of it being an actual chemical thing, I think that everyone experiences self-doubt, but I also don't think that self-doubt negates confidence or that confidence negates self-doubt. Like, I think that they can coexist. One of the things that I think really sets new entrepreneurs up or really anybody up for this internalized sense of failure is the concept of fake it till you make it. Mm. Because instead of getting real and, and, you know, learning what you got to learn or figuring things out or even trying something or risking to be vulnerable, to make a mistake, to put yourself out there. Instead, everybody walks around with this, this bravado and this fakeness. And what happens is, does that stops you? First of all, you know, you're faking it. And so that's going to eat away at you because every time you're in a room, every time you're on stage, every time, you know, you're in a clubhouse talking, you're going to the back of your mind go, but I'm just faking it. Right. And haven't really, yeah. and that's going to trigger that imposter syndrome. And that's going to keep you not talking. Right. Also, I think it really disconnects you from connecting authentically 
to your audience, to your your peers, to your friends, because you once you start lying, faking, you have to continue to. It's so much more empowering to embrace that you're not where you want to be yet, but you're working on it. And your confidence can come from your capacity <clears throat> to learn and your capacity to grow and your capacity to get there, right? I almost feel like we're in a private coaching session right now. Everything that you just said is just so on point to even what I'm going through at times right now. Like it, it's just so liberating for me to, to say to myself, like, okay, this is where you are. You don't have to be here yet. And you don't have to pretend that you're here yet. And people will accept you knowing that you're not here yet. So yeah, everything you just said, I, I totally relate to that on a very, very personal level. And I want to add on to that, what you just said, people will accept you. If you are in the right circles for you, people will welcome you and support you in. And if you're in circles where people are belittling you or making you feel small because you're not there yet, you need to find better circles. You need to tell the haters they got to go. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay. So another question here, do you think there's ever a point where you can truly banish self-doubt from your life. Like if this is something that is worked on continually over time, is there this destination that one can arrive at where self-doubt no longer exists? Or is this more like one of those things that we just learn to manage? So it just becomes easier and easier and easier to cope with those feelings when they come up. And we just know that they will come up from time to time indefinitely, but it's a lot less, um, extreme or severe because we feel like, okay, here it is again. Here's that self-doubt. This is how I manage it. And so it just makes it so much more easy. So I feel like you already just answered the question, right? Yeah. I think you're probably right. (laughs) Like, do you know what I mean? You just answered it. And, and, and I think the way that you answered it was you just answered it in within your own belief paradigm with your own belief system. Right. Right. And I think, Exactly. And remember when I talked about confidence being about trusting in your capacity to learn things and to figure things out and to persevere. That's your paradigm. So of course, for you, this is something that you will get better at managing, at mitigating, at overcoming, at not listening to, right? But I think the deeper question here is that I don't think we want self-doubt to disappear. I think that it's really important for our growth. I think that if we're experiencing self-doubt, that's an opportunity to to ask yourself, well, do I have all the information? Is there more here to learn? Or even deeper, where is this pointing to maybe a, a subconscious belief I wasn't aware was there until this triggered it? And this is an opportunity now to work on this. And that to me is another level of confidence, another layer of confidence when we can go, oh, this isn't that I'm not good. Like what you just said, this isn't that I'm not good. This is that this is bringing up some old stuff and I'm going to go ahead and maybe journal on this or maybe talk to my therapist or talk it out with my best friend and just work through some of this. Right. Yeah. That's such a more of a, a much more empowering way to look at something that usually tends to hold us back. Being that a, a large part of why I do what I do is is really about using entrepreneurship as that vehicle for radical self acceptance. Mm. Because as entrepreneurs, you're constantly putting yourself out there. You are constantly being triggered by things, and it gives you an opportunity to look at those things over time. Maybe not all at once, but over time, and be able to start to shed away the 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 weight, the expectations, the you know the trauma. So it just lets, lets you start to shed that stuff away and begin to really accept yourself. And so again, you know, does self-doubt ever go away? Well, probably not because as humans, we're constantly peeling away the layers of ourselves and our own inner, inner work and our own inner life. And so, yeah, I, I embrace it, embrace it as an opportunity to grow as a person. Mm, wonderful. Love that. All right. So I just want to briefly touch on 2020, which I know we're all sick to death of hearing about 2020, but I think this is kind of important. It was a tough year for a lot of people. A lot of people had goals totally derailed. And I think that, you know, obviously can result in a lot of self-doubt, um, a, a knock in people's confidence. Um, yeah. So we're just out of January now, beginning of February. So we're still kind of in that goal setting season. And I want to know with the people that you've worked with, or that you currently work with, have you seen the effects of 2020 and the knock-on effects with confidence and self-doubt? Have you found that that has negatively impacted how people have decided to set goals 
for 2021? Like, are people playing a bit more small? Are they being a little bit more reserved because they're, you know, not as confident maybe as they were beforehand? Mm -hmm. And if that is the case, is there a way to kind of use those, drawn on those challenges that we all experienced in 2020 um, to instead propel us forward this year? Yeah. rather than have them hold us back and keep us playing small. So many great points in that question that you just made. So many. The use of the word negative, I think it's an interesting dynamic to bring to this conversation because I think that people definitely saw their goals derailed, but people also made new goals, right? Mm -hmm. I think there's a lot of people that saw, especially for those that were able to pivot and adapt and get online, they were able to see a different possibility for their business and a different level of growth that was possible. And so I think that their goals changed. A lot of people's businesses changed and heading into this year, there's a different, it's like a lot of people are reporting that they feel like they're starting a new business. Mm, yeah. They're learning how they're having to learn how to build differently and, and set different expectations as well. And so because of that, I would say that goal setting is down. I, I think that people are still very much in 2020. I think that it's just a continuation of the year, energetically, mentally, emotionally. And I think that people are still catching up. And I don't know that they're setting more cautious goals. I think there's a lot more just recalibrating and changing expectations and what their business looks like. And they're still very much, at least the people that I'm working with are still very much in that space of still adapting and seeing what's possible and setting different kinds of goals. The other thing too, is that again, it depends who you talk to because there's people who are so fired up because they've just got this whole new vision and they're just like, it's like so fresh and they're just going for it. And there's other people who the year kind of kicked their butt and they're like, I'm just going gentle on myself this year. Mm -hmm. I'm setting goals, but they're much gentler. They're much softer. They're not as ambitious, you know, especially with, with people with kids at home. Do you know, like they're just, there's a lot more gentleness in the goal setting. Um, so I think it's changed. I don't think it's negative, but I think it's definitely changed. Right. Okay, cool. Um, so I want to get to some practical ways mm -hmm. that we can all use to manage our self-doubt. So you've got this great video on your YouTube channel, which I absolutely loved. Um, the four steps to ditch self-doubt. So I'm hoping yeah. that you can just go over those four steps with us here today and give us something practical to, to take away. I will. I love tangible things. I love giving okay. like, okay, now go do this. Okay. Yeah. So if you, if you want to watch my video, you can absolutely go and watch that, but I'll give you the Coles notes right now. So the first step to really overcoming self-doubt is to just recognize your signs because I think we've been so conditioned to fake it till we make it. We've stopped recognizing our own signs of self-doubt. So what's going on for you. One of the things that I do when I'm in self-doubt is what I call Netflix and avoid. <laughs> like I'll just watch TV and not put myself out there and ruminate on things. And then I'll maybe beat myself up <laughs> for not doing it. And so that's one of my signs. I know, you know, when I'm, when I'm disengaging from creating social content or disengaging, from putting myself out there, that's a big sign that I'm in a place of imposter syndrome or self-doubt for other people. They might become overly aggressive and they might really kind of fake it and, and, you know, be out there, but because there's, there's that disconnect, they're like overcompensating, like they're rah, right. So just really knowing for you, what are the signs? Am I you know, am I not speaking up as much? Am I tripping on my words when I'm talking? Like what is going on for you that shows you that you're in a place of doubting yourself in this moment, right? Yeah. Maybe. One of the things you mentioned as one of the yeah. signs was comparison syndrome. And yes. that is something that I resonate with so much. Um, it, it's just so easy to look out there and see what other people are doing. And wow, like there's just so much good stuff out there. And, yeah. and I think, you know, uh, perfectionism really ties in well with that too. Yeah. Um, one of the things, especially in this online space is I, sometimes I get fixated on my age, you know, I'm over 40 now. Um, and there's so many people in this online space that are, they all seem to be 30 or under 30 or 20, or I swear to God, they're like 10, 10 years old now. And so getting Some into them. this, <laughs> getting into this at a later stage yeah. and 40 is not old by any stretch. Um, but sometimes I, you know, I compare myself like, wow, look, this person's 25 and they're doing something similar and they're, they've been kicking butt for five years already. Yeah. And, you know, it's, so I, I definitely allow myself to get dragged into that uh, sometimes. And then, yeah, what you're just talking about, the stumbling over your words and, yeah. um, you know, having trouble getting something out, I think yeah. 
as an introvert, that really resonates with me. Um, I think a lot of time, you know, introverts, speaking doesn't necessarily come naturally to introverts. Mm. Um, there's a lot of sort of filtering and processing that happens before it actually uh, leaves our lips. So in a, in a space where there are a lot of extroverts that are kind of like really out there and um, a bit more on the gregarious side, I think that can sometimes cause introverts. I know for me, I can feel like, oh, I'm, that actually, I feel like I'm shrinking back from that and uh, I end up feeling, you know, inarticulate. And then yeah. I guess that feeds back into the loop of comparison. Like now I'm comparing myself yeah. to somebody else. And I've never really considered those all signs of being of self-doubt. So that was, it was really helpful to have you frame it that way. Well, and I, I think it's, it's, you know, cause self-doubt and imposter syndrome to me, those are really interchangeable, right? And comparison is a trigger for most people in that, because it, why would you be doubting yourself if you didn't think that you weren't as good as? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, being in the, in the social media world. I mean, it's constant, right? And I think that back to my point about that radical self-acceptance, if we can radically accept that I'm, well, I'm not, I'm obviously extroverted and you know that, but like <laughs> if I was an introvert, right? Like I'm, I'm introverted and I don't have the same gregariousness or I don't have the same energy output or I don't have the same things as this person. I don't beat myself up because of that or think that I have to pretend to be that. I accept that this is me. Mm -hmm. And this is, this is how I talk and this is my energy and this is how I show up. And the more that you accept that, what happens is you stop fighting yourself. Mm -hmm. And when you stop fighting yourself, all of a sudden you have a lot more energy, <laughs> right? And you're just learning all this now. I, like I said, yeah. I'm in my forties now. I'm just now learning all this. And it, let me tell you, it is liberating to know that yeah. this is me. I don't need to pretend to be somebody else. This yeah. is me. I'm enough. Um, yeah, it, it is. It's it like, really is. that's, that's a sign. Am I fighting myself right now? Am mm -hmm. I fighting what feels good? Am I fighting my true nature? Am I trying to be something I'm not because I think I have to? Yeah. Cause right? that really, really is draining for sure. It really is. And it affects everything. It affects everything, yeah. your creativity, everything. Yeah. But what you just said too, about feeling, was it inadequate that you said inadequate compared I to think, the, I think that all ties in, right? I mean, the comparison, it's all, you know, it's all interconnected. Well, and, and that's where, like, I mean, that literally leads into step two, which is recognize what you're feeling, like connect to the feeling. If I'm chilling out with Netflix and, you know, not doing my work because I'm feeling imposter syndrome or self-doubt, I need to, I need to connect to what's going on so I can root it out. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, is it inadequate? Is it not capable? Is it, um, you know, is it embarrassed because things aren't perfect? Is it, do you feel exposed? Do you feel vulnerable? Really connecting to what you're feeling. And this is a, a funny thing because I noticed this really weird trend where people will say, I feel like I could be working harder. Like you can be working harder isn't a feeling, right? right. I feel lazy. Maybe that's what you're feeling, right? Yeah. Or I feel like all these youngins are really nailing this technology and I don't get it. Okay. Feeling like youngins nailing technology, right? That's not a feeling, but <laughs> you know, feeling dumb. Maybe you, maybe you feel dumb. That's, that's a thing for me. I used to always feel so dumb and I would get so frustrated with myself for feeling so dumb, right? You're so dumb, Lindsay. I'm you should so be surprised to hear that. <laughs> right. Well, I mean, yeah. hey, that comes from, that comes from somewhere that had to get worked on. Right. But, but really connecting to the feeling and not being afraid to name it because what happens is we push these feelings down. We push the truth of where we're at in that moment down and it comes out in nasty ways, right? And it affects us in our business. It affects us in our relationships. It affects our health. But if you just claim it, if you just own it, it almost immediately neutralizes what the feeling is if you just say it. Because if yeah. I say, oh, you're so dumb, Lindsay. Well, I'm actually not. And where did that come from? That voice can just go away because I'm not dumb, right? You're so lazy. You, no, I'm really not. <laughs> you work hard, right? So it just gives you a chance to just verbalize it, neutralize it, and, and hopefully track where it originally came from, who originally told you that. And you can just tell that person to go sit on the shelf because you got an empire to build. Right. So I just want to, I just want to get clarity here. So number one was recognize the signs. Yep. Number two was acknowledge it's, what you're feeling. Acknowledge the feeling. Yep. Okay. Okay. All and right. then so what's get, what's number three support, get support. 
right? Yes. Like I just said, hey, do you need to book a session with your therapist if it's something really deep? Do you need to just call one of your friends and be like, all right, talk me down from the ledge? Do you have a community that you belong to that you can go talk to there? And maybe maybe it's that you'd help figuring out a piece of tech and you can just get the solution and then boom, you're done, right? So get the support that you need to move you through this point, whether it's emotional, technical, you know what I mean? You need a big hug, whatever it is, get support. Yeah, super important. I think so often when, when things are coming up for ourselves, we just tell ourselves, oh, I'll be fine. And then we just kind of... Um, carry on to what we're going to get to in a minute with the fourth step without addressing the, actually, I'm not fine. Yeah. I think I need some help here. Yeah. So that's super important. With what's going on in the world right now, like we're not fine. Okay. Like I think if 2020 taught us anything, it's that we're not fine. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. And so, you know, it's just so much faster if you just deal with it, if you just speak it and you get some support and you just deal with it, <laughs> it's just so much faster. Absolutely. Right? And then, yeah, that leads us to number four, which is again, to action. So once you are figuring out what's going on, what you're feeling, you've been able to talk it out, get into action because your confidence really comes from being in the magic of what you do, of reconnecting to how damn good you are at what you do. And so like, get in there, get into action, make something magical happen in your business, in your life, in whatever. And it will, again, get you out of you know, into like, oh, I got this. I'm good. All right. Now, one other thing that that you talked about in your video with this Mm -hmm. um, stay in action point, you talked about mistakes. And I loved what you said. You said mistakes are proof that you were coming out of your comfort zone and leveling up in your business. And I think this is so, so important. And one of the biggest keys to staying in action is to just accept and even welcome those mistakes. Because I think that's a big part of why we don't stay in action so often is because we are terrified of making any mistakes, right? Like we are just constantly, like if it's not perfect, then it's garbage. Yeah. And for me, I know once I just accepted mistakes are part of the process, Yeah. then you anticipate them, you welcome them, and you know that each mistake is actually leading you to something, yes. to whatever it is that you're going for. So I didn't want to leave that out because I think that was just such a huge, huge part of that staying in action step. It, is. it, 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 it is like, it is, I love this quote from Adventure Time, <laughs> the cartoon. And it's like, <laughs> dude, sucking at something is the first step to getting kind of good at something. Like, <laughs> you know, we all start off sucking and nobody is good. The difference between like the 20 year olds and you is that they've been living at home and have had lots of time and someone to pay their bills while they get to figure it all out. Well, we're figuring it out in tiny increments while also raising kids and working jobs and building businesses, right? So like we all started in the same place, but everyone has different time capacities to give to things and different skill sets to apply. We cannot compare ourselves to other people. We just have to go, what do I want? Yeah. All right. What is stopping me from going for it? Get the support there and then just embrace sucking because you're going to get better if you stick with it. Amazing. Thank you. So I want to leave it there on that positive note. And yeah, thanks so much for taking the time to speak with us all today. Um, Super valuable. And I know everyone watching is going to get a ton of value out of it. Uh, But before we go, please tell everyone watching where they can go to find out more about you and what you're doing and all the greatness that you're that you've got on offer right now. I will absolutely uh, come to my website, theradicalconnector.com. You can also check me out on YouTube, The Radical Connector. Uh, And if you are new in business and you in particular uh, feel uncomfortable with selling, when you go to my YouTube channel or to my website, you will get prompted to get my free guide, the uh, how how not to sell to strangers guide five steps to turning strangers into customers online. Uh, Yeah. Without selling. So I'm all about selling without selling. So if that's you come hang out. (laughs) Awesome. I will leave all those links in the description below. Once again, thank you so much, Lindsay. We will, uh, well, I'll definitely be talking to you soon and uh, yeah. Thank you. Bye everyone. All right. Take care everyone. Bye-bye. Check out these videos next for some more on mindset, motivation, and performance. And if you like this video, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe, and share this video with your friends. Thanks for watching.